Stephen, it's Monday again, hate the Mondays blue. Sarah, you better not let boss hear it. Let's get back to work. Sarah, did you feel the tremor? Yup, I felt it. Let's get down and take cover. Look, what is happening? Alright, I'm gonna go under the desk. Yes, today the northern part of the country was hit by an earthquake. We shall now invite Dr. Kalib to share on causation of an earthquake. Within the earth, there are three main layers of it, the core, mantle and crust. Earthquakes are caused by the release of built-up pressure inside the earth's crust. An earthquake is the shaking and vibration of the earth's crust due to movement of the earth's plates. Earthquakes can happen along any type of plate boundary. Earthquakes occur when tension is released from inside the crust. Plates do not always move smoothly alongside each other and sometimes get stuck. When this happens pressure builds. The point inside the crust where the pressure is released is called the focus. The point on the Earth's surface above the focus is called the epicenter. Earthquake energy is released in seismic waves. These waves spread out from the focus. The waves are felt most strongly at the epicenter. So, are there different kinds of plate boundaries? There are three main kinds of plate boundaries semicolon characterized by the way plates move relative to each other. They are convergent plate, divergent plate and transforms plate boundaries. For convergent plate boundaries, plates move towards each other and become faulted, folded and sometimes subducted. Divergent plate boundaries are areas where two plates move away from each other. Magma moves upwards to the surface where it cools to form new oceanic crust along these boundaries. Lastly, for transform plate boundaries, plates slide past each other, resulting in the formation of transform fault. Tremendous stress build up to form violent earthquakes. So, what is the possible impact of an earthquake? Some hazards associated with living in earthquake zone include the threat of tsunamis, disruption of services, fires, landslides and loss of lives. Hence, it is therefore important to have preparedness measures such as land use regulations, building design, infrastructure development, emergency drills and use of technology. Thank you for your sharing, Dr. Kalib. It is nice having you here. You are most welcome.